You're listening to Bible Truth Feed, a podcast by Christadelphianvideo.org for Christadelphians and all those seeking the truth about the Bible message. Join us now as we present our latest episode. Hey, Bible students, have you ever considered the Bible passage that we ought to be perfectly joined together? That's a, an incredible idea because if you've ever tried to do that, you will find it, it is most difficult. But I'd like to deal on this short video with some of the ideas which make it difficult and how it is that God's calling to do this is so wonderful if we can achieve it. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, the apostle says, I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now, that's the key, you see. It's not just where are we going to go to enjoy ourselves. It is to be in the same mind and in the same judgment concerning some of the most difficult things that we have to face in life. Now, number one thing that the Bible student has to be concerned about is what is the source for which we're going to make this decision to try to be of one mind, and that is Scripture only. You see, in Jude, that little short epistle written by Jude, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Now, you can see from that little verse, that little instruction, that the Bible was revealed once for all time. That's the idea of it, that it's not continually being shown and, and, uh, and revealed by God. But God has done this for all generations during the time of the writing of the Old Testament and the New Testament and nothing afterwards. Now, without believing that, we get ourselves into trouble trying to be our true Bible student. So we have to be careful again about what do the scriptures really say. You see, it is picked up by a little comment made in John 21, verse 23, when the writer of the uh, gospel record, John himself, made this comment. Then this saying went out among the brethren that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. But if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? So that is being very careful with God's word to make sure that what we're basing our belief on to be perfectly joined together is based on what the Bible does say and not what it does not say. Now, that's going to be a very important principle in later videos when we see how people have got that wrong, that they really have based their belief on something the Bible does not say at the same time thinking they did make it on what the Bible said. So it's going to be critical to remember that verse. Now, this has been an historical problem because perfectly joined together, but not by marginal notes, was how the King James came to us. Because this Bible shown to you here, the Geneva Bible, which existed before the King James Version did by maybe 30 or so years, was full of marginal notes being written by Protestants from Switzerland who believed that was the way to get the message out and communicate it. But marginal notes have a real problem in that it really bypasses the idea of being a Bible student. All you have to read is the marginal note, but the marginal note is not part of what the Bible was originally. It's been added, added by the judgment of men and women who believe that's what the Bible was saying. Even in ourselves, when we mark our Bibles, we have to be careful that we don't cross that line. When we put marginal notes in it, that is saying this is what the Bible text says, we are then 
excluding further research, because when we come back to the Bible to read it again, we just pick up the marginal reference that we've written there, and that satisfies it. But how many times over the years have we thought differently about a Bible passage? As more time and more seasoning happen, yes, we, we have looked differently. But you see, if you have a marginal reference there, the chances are you just go with the marginal reference. Now, we have to be careful by what is included in some Bibles because we have the Apocrypha. For instance, when the, I believe that when the King James Bible was first written, that it was written with the Apocrypha. So that here were books that even Bible students of the day reasoned that these were not really part of the Bible. They weren't on the same par as what the Old Testament was, was and the New Testament was. They were just writings of history. And the key thing was, that in many cases, they disagree with what you would find in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So just because it's part of a Bible that we may have, including these other books, is not sufficient reason for us to be uh, of one mind on what they say. Now, that includes additional writings. And uh, this is what I want to con continue to say with regard to uh, the Book of Mormon and other books which have been written and claim to be further revelations by God. Well, the, see, the, the key thing is, is to look at these before we get tied to them, believing what they teach, is to how did they come to be? Was it that God really, in, uh, in North America, decided that we needed a revelation when he had said through, as we read uh, the, the uh, prophet Jude, that he would not do so because it was appealing to him and to others to look at what had already been revealed once for all time. But again, you look at the Book of Mormon and you see places where it disagrees with what the Bible teaches. So we got to be very careful with any additional writings. <clears throat> now, even some things that are not written in the uh, margin of our Bible, but are there in uh, guiding uh, teachings of the church, we have to be careful. Uh, I don't pick on the Catholic Church because they have a catechism, because Christadelphians have a catechism. Almost all religious groups have a catechism which combines the teaching of their church in a separate publication. And I really don't have issue with that, because it would be almost impossible to convey what you have learned to other people without writing it down somewhere. But the point of the Catechism of the Catholic Church is that they have appealed to the, to the reader to assume equal authority between the Bible and church councils and the revelation they believe that popes added to, to the mix. That's where you have mixed the teaching of men and uh, the teaching of uh, communities of people to what the Bible has to say. That will not make us perfectly joined together. It is only the Bible itself that can do that. And not with new translations or versions. For instance, the Jehovah's Witnesses have the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, and they're not the only ones. In fact, if you go on the Internet, you can even find a group claiming to be Christadelphian who produced the New European Version. Well, that was never justified by the Christadelphian community. That was just people who believed that, well, let's, let's do it. Let's just take it in our hands and do it, and we'll call it Christadelphia. And you really can't stop people from doing those kinds of things. But that does not have the verification and the backing of the Christadelphia movement in general. So because you see new translations or versions are generally written to convey the party line. This is what we teach. And although it, it uh, would seem to be an easy way to teach others who, who don't have it, and they're getting it from other groups to just, you know, level the playing field, not for Bible students. There is nothing that can replace people being students of the Bible. To get in there and do the tough grinding out of what does the Bible really say. And it's based upon this principle we've talked about many times in our videos. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, it's a prime principle of Bible interpretation. As the Apostle Paul said, these things we also speak, 
not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So you see, that's the reason why we separate from the things that men have written, maybe even things that we ourselves wrote at some time in the past, because it's not in words which man's wisdom teaches that leads us to the understanding that will combine us together perfectly. It's which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That means going to the Bible and seeing that what the Bible or what you think the Bible teaches in one place is really supported by what it teaches in another place. That's why there's so many books in the Bible. It's, it's an interesting, it's a, a time-consuming thing, but it is a wonderful way to unite people together. Now, the Bible specifically says this in the book of Revelation, and some people uh, know this and, and continue to do it. Let's first of all look at what it says, because these are the words of Jesus Christ in his last revelation to Bible students. I testify, this is chapter 22, verse 18, I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. Well, if you know much about the plagues that are written in this book, you would never want that to happen. So we avoid doing that. We, we steer away from anything that goes to adding to what God has to say, because that will not unite us in spirit. And it says, again, if we compare spiritual with spiritual, in another part of the word of God, in Deuteronomy, so here you're looking at the very other end, the first five books of the Bible, it says in Deuteronomy 4, verse 2, you shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord, or Yahweh your God, which I command you. So that's the spirit of the Bible. Don't add, don't take away from what the Bible reveals. But by comparing spiritual with spiritual, you will have it. So again, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul calls us to worship together as Bible students with one mind and one mouth. In Romans 15, verses 5 and 6, it says, Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and with one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Bible students, that's what we are called to. But that's not an easy task. But there are restrictions. There are ways of achieving that if we stick to those restrictions as the Bible commends them to us. So we hope to build on this in future videos. And as you continue to study his word, we pray to God and seek that you would pray to God as well, that he will help you as he says he will to understand his word. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the episode helpful. Don't forget, most of these episodes are also available as videos on our video channel, cdvideo.org. So head over and take a look. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please get in touch or leave us a voice message. We love to hear your feedback. You can email us at bt f at cdvideo.org. If you enjoyed the episode, then please share it with others. Until next time, may God bless you in your studies and your walk towards God's kingdom. Amen.